okay uh, we will continue but uh, if you have any audible uh, audibility issue please let me know now uh, so we will move uh, with the uh, with the different methods uh, for uh, derivation of the earth uh, ages sorry uh, as i said uh, we are having uh, different methods for example uh, first method rubidium strontium isotopes then neodymium model uh, ages then uranium lead system and there is another system called lead lead method and uh, then uh, we have another extensively used uh, uh, method uh, uranium thorium lead dating method and also uh, we have another uh, method using uh, 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 we call a chemical iso isochron method do you hear me now uh, yeah, yes, sir. Now we can hear. And uh, huh? is it possible that we can give the recording as well in case if they miss something? Yes, uh, I'm. I'm doing the recording now. Oh, okay. So yeah. Or... In, in case if, if they miss any uh, terms or anything. So can... Yes, yes. Uh, definitely. I, I I will share the recording, but not now. I mean, uh, not uh, immediately, but uh, later on. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, yes, after maybe a few days, it's okay. Yes, yes, sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Please let uh, the students know that if there is an issue, uh, immediately tell me. Uh, give the mic to the, uh, close to them. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have uh, several methods uh, <clears throat> to uh, use the geochronology. Uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, as I said before, uh, let me repeat, uh, rubidium strontium isotopes have been used. Uh, there, uh, people have used garnet and also the whole rock composition. Okay, we will see how these are done uh, separately, but just now I am introducing only the methods. And there is another method called neodymium uh, model ages. Okay, so for these also, uh, mainly whole rocks are used. Uh, but sometimes uh, garnet can also be used, right? So uh, these are uh, widely used in uh, many uh, many systems. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, uranium uranium lead system, right? So this system is extensively used uh, because uh, we are using zircon grains. Okay, we are using zircon grains, uh, and uh, this uranium lead system is widely used and very very reliable method to uh, determine the ages, absolute ages of uh, the rocks. We call these absolute ages, right? Because there are some uh, relative age concept as well. Uh, it is just uh, giving, a, uh, as uh, the name itself implies, a relative age. For example, if you have one rock layer uh, intruded by a dike, right? So suppose uh, you have one, just uh, one rock layer intruded by a dike. And uh, if somebody asks you about the relative timing of these two, right? Uh, without age dating, you can't say exact time. That is the absolute time, right? You don't know at what age. That means how many million years ago this dike was emplaced. You can't say, right? But you can say some kind of a relative uh, timing. That means you definitely understand uh, the the age has a young age. Uh, compared to the rock layer because it shows uh, its intrusion features. That means the rock layer should have been there uh, for the dike to be intruded into. Right? So likewise, you can uh, give some uh, relative ages. These are also important in geological mapping as well as uh, in some, uh, some, uh, some situations. Right? So therefore, uh, relative ages are also used, but uh, in geochronology, uh, we are uh, mainly dealing with uh, absolute ages. Okay? Uh, the next method is a lead lead method and that is also mainly considered uh, by uh, using uh, usage of zircons and also whole rock can be used right zircons and also whole rocks that is also possible right these methods have been applied to sri lankan rocks as well and there is another method that is uranium thorium lead dating uh, but uh, here we use uh, some special uh, diagram uh, that we call uh, the uh, chemical isochron method. Okay, this is a different method, uh, slightly different method, uh, but the, based on the same principles. Uh, 
uh, and also we call this is an indirect method right it's not a direct method like uh, we have here because here you go uh, you can get exactly uh, the age in numbers directly but here you have to do uh, some other processing uh, to get uh, the age right uh, therefore this is not an uh, direct method but an indirect method for this uh, widely we use monocyte as well as zircon right monocyte is the most uh, famous mineral uh, for this chemical isochron method it is also applied for sri lankan rocks right so anyway these are uh, some uh, different methods uh, that have been used for isotopic uh, uh, age determinations uh, in the sri lankan rocks okay before going to the next uh, next slide, uh, please let me know uh, whether I am audible to you clearly. Am I audible? Monkey in the Pahadila Hello, another Pahadila. Okay, okay, right. Okay, let's move to the next slide. There, uh, I, 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 I want to introduce you just the concept, right? Very briefly, because uh, for the general degree students, you will miss this part uh, since uh, uh, this is not uh, taught uh, until the fourth year, right? So uh, we, uh, you can consider uh, this equation. This we call the isotopic equation. Okay, age for age dating, we use this equation. Actually. The, uh, the the uh, the term t here right it is uh, indicating time right so this is time and uh, we we what we want to derive is time right uh, we want to get the time using this equation right Th time means uh, the age okay for that we need to know all the other parameters d means dot atoms right dot atoms means i said uh, as i said before uh, radiogenic decay uh, cause parent atoms to uh, decay into daughter atoms okay so this p means parent atoms parent atoms that means uh, one element will produce another element okay that is uh, what you mean by uh, this isotopic decay so one element produces another element as a result of uh, radiogenic decay right so maybe here you have gamma ray dissipation or some uh, some heat dissipation or something right so this is uh, this one is different from uh, the producing one so this we call parent and this one we call daughter okay so number of parent atoms and number of daughter atoms produced uh, is a uh, important matter in this isotope uh, uh, dating method usually they decay in an exponential way right exponential way uh, this, uh, this is an exponential decay so you can see here uh, you have an e right so this indicates this is an exponential decay so uh, the time taken to make uh, the uh, parent atom say this is a uh, hundred percent maybe uh, the initial time okay and uh, there will be a certain time where you have uh, the number of parent atoms is now 50 okay uh, compared to the original situation compared to the original situation uh, 50 so the time taken for for this decay that means to make this uh, 100 atoms into 50 okay the time taken is t is called not this t actually this t uh, the the time taken uh, for this uh, uh, making this parent atom a half from the original is called the uh, is called the what half life okay half life for this system for this particular system half life because uh, it depends on uh, it depends on the uh, it depends on the isotopic system that we are considering right 
So we need the half-life also uh, into consideration uh, for this uh, decay, uh, decay uh, process. But here we, you have uh, lambda, another term uh, called lambda. Uh, actually, this is a decay constant, right? It's a different parameter, which is constant for a, a given system. So if we know uh, number of dot atoms and number of parent atoms and decay constant, then we can uh, determine the time. Time means the age, right? Not the half-life, okay? It is, uh, this T means age. Don't get confused, okay? This is age, age of the uh, system, age of the system that we are considering. Okay, so this is the geochronological uh, concept anyway. Uh, so uh, we will see how uh, this is uh, used in uh, geochronology. Actually, there is no way for us to count uh, these number of atoms. Okay, remember, there is no way for us to count these atoms number of atoms. Instead, what we do is we are we are considering uh, some isotopic ratios, right? We are measuring isotopic ratios, not actually the number of atoms, right? So there is uh, isotopic uh, uh, ratio determination, uh, I mean ratio counting methods. Uh, for example, we have to use uh, some equipment called uh, uh, ICPMS, inductively coupled mass spectrometer. Actually, we have to use uh, there are several types of mass spectrometers, uh, not only ICPMS, but there are other IC, uh, mass spectrometers as well. Whatever the mass spectrometer we have is uh, okay uh, for us to uh, count the isotopic ratios. So using these isotopic ratios, uh, which is equivalent to these atomic ratios, okay, this number, number of ratios. So instead of this number of atoms, we are using isotopic ratio. So I will, I will, I will show you uh, in the uh, upcoming slides, uh, what these isotopic ratios uh, means, right? So anyway, uh, just keep in mind that uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, geochronological equation that uh, we have to use uh, for age determination. Okay, so uh, let's see uh, this decay. Uh, for example, uranium lead system, right? So in this technique, uranium lead uh, technique, uh, we use uh, uranium-238 isotope, right? Uranium-238 isotope that decays into lead-206. Now you see my previous uh, slide. I, I told you the parent isotope and the uh, dot isotope. Those are two different, entirely different, right? Now you can understand that. Uranium produces lead. They are entirely different uh, atoms. Right, so this is the uh, beauty of this uh, isotopic uh, radiogenic decay. Right, to make it uh, half of uranium uh, two thirty eight, for example, here I said hundred percent here. So to make hundred percent, I mean uh, now say we are starting now the decay. We have hundred uh, iso uh, hundred uh, uranium uh, two thirty eight isotopes, just uh, atoms, number of atoms. Uh, you just keep in mind. And uh, we are going to make it 50, right? For this uh, making 50, see how uh, how much uh, time is taken. 4.47 gil uh, giga anoms, billion years. That means to make two th uh, to uh, to make half of uh, uranium 238 isotopes uh, atoms. Uh, it uh, you have to spend 4.47 billion years. That is a half life. Right, so this is uh, this is uh, how uh, different uh, they have in half lives in uh, depending on their isotopes. For example, two thirty five uranium two thirty five decays into two thirty uh, sorry two o seven lead. Right, for that it takes seven hundred four million years. So it's different, entirely different. Right, this is very very large, very huge, but this is uh, relatively small. Right. But still, it's big, we know. For 704 million years means it's a long time, right? So anyway, uh, these half-lives are there for different systems and for our different purposes, we can use. For example, uh, if we are using very old rocks to uh, determination of ages, we can uh, straight away go for this uh, uranium lead method without problem, problem because uh, they have a half-life, long half-life, so that uh, 
uh, we know there are enough uh, amounts of uh, parent daughter uh, uh, atoms uh, within the system right if the half life is very short then uh, you cannot measure the daughter isotopes because uh, your parent isotopes have already gone uh, finished right so you cannot uh, determine the parent daughter ratio correctly so likewise uh, uh, there are limitations but uh, in case of uh, old ages age determinations we can uh, straight away use the uranium lead system that's why it is a very very popular uh, technology uh, uh, technique right so <clears throat> uh, this uranium lead uh, system is very popular as i said uh, because uh, this uranium and lead are very much uh, 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 used with the mineral called zircon okay this is uh, an image of zircon uh, you can see the zircon here and uh, this uh, zircon is very resistant mineral that means uh, it does not de uh, it does not weather easily right so that means uh, if we have a zircon generated at a very long time ago still it might be there uh, even in the present day without a problem so that we can use that grain uh, to measure uh, these uh, parent uh, parent daughter isotope ratios and to find out uh, its age so since it is a very resistant mineral uh, you can uh, find it in rocks in uh, in uh, abundant levels uh, and uh, we can collect them and uh, find out uh, the age right so uh, this is a very good material that we have to use uh, for age dating right so we can get uh, different geological ages because uh, zircon records uh, these age signatures in their structure right sometimes even here you can see the center of the central part of this zircon showing some kind of a uh, core core like feature uh, and uh, it's uh, it has a different texture right compared to its edges like here right so actually these edges are formed later on right you know uh, the nucleation takes place here and then gradually the zircon grows like this right so when this zircon grows uh, it takes time right so if you have a, 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 a zircon like this uh, in a rock we know that initially this zircon was uh, crystallized and uh, the 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 initial crystallized part is uh, the uh, the core region right so if you analyze this core part you will get one edge right say t say t1 you will get one edge uh, t1 and if you analyze this part the the outer part you will get another edge uh, say t2 so this is a way this is giving very important information because uh, you have ev evidence age evidence for growth right maybe this is uh, 2 billion years uh, t1 and uh, the 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 outer part might give you 550 million years. so you know uh, for growing this much of the corn it has taken more than 1500 million years right so likewise, uh, we can have uh, very interesting interpretations based on this uh, age dating of zircon. So this is what uh, the, the technique people use for age determination of uh, rocks. So in Sri Lanka also, uh, for geochronological work, zircon has been used extensively. Uh, so uh, it is very, very convenient method. So we have early studies and recent studies why i uh, categorize them into uh, two groups is uh, early studies used uh, one different technique and uh, recent studies used several new techniques you know uh, with the time these techniques were also developed extensively so they are but, uh, but of course uh, they are still consistent uh, even uh, early uh, studies gave the same ages as uh, what we see from the new uh, new techniques only thing is the easiness of uh, using uh, or the applying uh, the methodology right and more more uh, more uh, more modernized uh, ways we have and more easy way ways we have now 
uh, to apply in early studies uh, we have to you have to uh, spend a long period of time uh, in the lab uh, to do these uh, age determinations but now uh, the systems are more automated and uh, you can you can uh, run the system while doing some other work also right so that's the only difference but uh, early both early and recent studies are very very consistent and very robust very uh, confident uh, very uh, uh, confident also okay uh, Right. Uh, so let's uh, let's see uh, some early studies. Uh, you have to note down these uh, uh, these uh, studies because these are very important milestones in geochronological framework of Sri Lanka. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you can see uh, in nineteen twenty seven, uh, very uh, early studies, uh, right? Uh, and uh, nineteen thirty nine, we have uh, another study, right? So these two. That means Holmes 1927 and uh, near uh, 1939. These are the earliest studies of uh, age determination, determinations of Sri Lankan rocks, right? And then uh, people have used another isotopic system, rubidium strontium uh, isotopic system, which I uh, mentioned you before, right? See, rubidium strontium system, right? So this is another uh, popular method uh, we use. Uh, particularly to indicate the protolith ages, not the metamorphic ages, right? Zircon is used uh, extensively for determination of uh, protolith ages as well as metamorphic ages, but uh, rubidium strontium mainly uh, used for determination of protolith ages. So we have uh, Crawford and Oliver, 1969, and uh, a study by Vikramasinghe, 1969, Kodani and Kure, 1990, and uh, D. Myshok and uh, 19, at all, 1990, right? These are uh, uh, the early studies uh, re regarding uh, our geochronological work, right? These are very, uh, very important studies. Actually, there are more studies uh, done during these periods, but uh, these are very, very uh, important studies. Uh, so kind of landmark studies, okay? And uh, as recent studies, we can uh, we can name uh, uh, especially the the pioneering studies uh, by Cronin et al. nineteen eighty seven, Cronin, and then uh, Wow et al. nineteen ninety one, uh, Cronin nineteen ninety two, Sajiv et al. Uh, two thousand nineteen uh, two thousand nine, Takamura et al. two thousand fifteen, Dharma et al. two thousand sixteen, and uh, uh, my work in 2018. So likewise, uh, we have uh, several uh, several recent studies. Of course, there are many, right? If you if you go uh, to a publication like, for example, say uh, this one, 2016 paper, you go uh, for that paper and read the uh, check the references there. You will find so many uh, past references indicating uh, geochronology of Sri Lankan work. Right. But uh, we, we can select some of uh, out of them, uh, some of uh, studies out of them, and uh, then uh, we, we, we can uh, we can determine uh, how people have uh, tried to constrain uh, different events in Sri Lanka uh, in terms of uh, uh, geochronology. OK, so uh, we will uh, we will go through some of those papers and uh, I think you have to read some of those papers. Uh, not completely, but uh, some uh, some uh, some parts uh, elaborating the uh, main uh, age interpretations. I will give you later on uh, such some of uh, such papers. Okay, but keep in mind that uh, we can divide our geochronological work uh, to early studies and recent studies. And out of uh, those early studies and re recent studies, these uh, particular studies. Uh, made uh, very important uh, milestones. Okay, so uh, as a method, we can consider uh, for uh, zircons. For example, in early studies, basically zircon uh, age dating was done by a, a technique or a method called zing uh, single zircon evaporation. Single zircon evaporation method. Uh, they are actually people uh, dissolved the zircon. I mean, evaporated. I mean, they they heated the zircon until 
uh, evaporation, right? This was an early uh, early method, and uh, that was uh, accompanied with uh, an instrument called TIMS, right? TIMS means T I M S TIMS. TIMS means thermal ionization mass spectrometry. Thermal ionization mass spectrometry. That means uh, uh, there is a filament, right? A filament like this. Uh, and on top of this filament, you have to put the dissolved zircon. I mean, you have to dissolve the zircon first chemically with using acids and put some drops here. Uh, you put some uh, zircon drops there on top of this filament. Actually, this filament you have to load into uh, the machine, right? Uh, the machine called TIMS, right? And uh, uh, you operate it uh, so that uh, there will be, I mean, the huge uh, temperature increase in this filament. These filaments are made of uh, rain, uh, rain, uh, renon or tungsten uh, elements, right? Uh, so uh, once you heat, uh, this uh, this uh, filament by uh, ionization uh, by inside the thermal ionization spectrometer, uh, this zircon will get evaporated. Okay, this zircon will get evaporated gradually, and this evaporated zircon will be uh, will be taken up by uh, the machine uh, into uh, into a chamber, and inside that chamber. Uh, there is uh, uh, some uh, uh, collecting mechanism, atomic collecting mechanism. So that means that this evaporated materials uh, will be going there as atomized form. And uh, there is possibility uh, for collecting these uh, different atoms because there are so many uh, different atoms. Uh, you know, uh, since the zircon contains uranium, thorium, lead, all together, right? Uh, all these evaporation materials will uh, will be consisted of uh, different uh, elements, right? Not only elements, even isotopic species will be there. 235, 238, uh, 206, 207, everything will be there as a mixture, right? So this mass spectrometer's function is to separate them out and count them. They count these uh, isotopic uh, molecules, uh, as a, uh, there is something called iron counter inside, and they can count and find out this uh, parent daughter ratio, right? This this ratio can be uh, calculated by counting, by iron counting, right? This is uh, what is happening uh, inside the machine. So there is a complex programming uh, going on there. So not only just mechanical uh, aspects there, there is a lot of uh, electronic and computer related uh, tasking uh, going on inside the machine, right? So uh, by that way, uh, this uh, parent dot isotope uh, counting uh, or the ratio uh, determination is uh, done. And finally, uh, we get an output uh, with the, uh, by the by a computer uh, in terms of uh, isotopic ratios. And these isotopic ratios uh, will be applied to this age equations a determination equation so that uh, now we know daughter uh, isotopes and we know uh, parent isotopes uh, because uh, our mass spectrometer gave us uh, those ratios and we can apply them and uh, we know the decay constant it is a known uh, constant and uh, all the unknowns i mean uh, all the other fa factors we know except for this t right so applying all these uh, uh, parameters you can get t calculated uh, by this equation so this is how we do the age determination this is automatically done uh, with a computer okay right and uh, <clears throat> early studies mainly this evaporation method was done uh, was utilized but later on uh, with the techniques developed develops uh, like uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, advanced techniques uh, where we can directly use the zircon vein itself without going for chemical dissolution or anything, right? Here we used uh, chemical dissolution of the grain. So as I mentioned before, right? But here you can use the zircon grain as it is, but of course not as it, it, uh, not as it is. So you have to do a little pro processing there, some polishing and uh, 
uh, mounting on a on a on a uh, disc, right? And that disc is uh, inserted into the machine instead of uh, a filament or anything, right? This is very easy. You can just mount the zircons and polish them like uh, you do the thin section polishing. And uh, prepared zircons will be uh, loaded into a machine, right? So mainly uh, these uh, uh, machines are uh, also a spectrum, uh, mass spectrometers, but attached with laser, right? Uh, laser, uh, laser beam, right? So this laser beam hits the zircon grain and uh, takes up the material out from there, like uh, what happens uh, in this uh, evaporation method, like, right? So here you uh, heat the uh, dissolved grain to get the material, but here, uh, in the new technique, what we do is we bombard it with a laser beam and get some material uh, excavated from the zircon and taken it out uh, into a, a mass spectrometer. And then uh, you count the number of uh, atoms like that. Okay, so this is a one uh, new technique that is a laser. So uh, since uh, laser is there, we call LAICPMS, laser ablation. So uh, the bombarding process is called ablation, right? Ablated by a laser, laser ablation mass spectrometer, LAICPMS, right? That is one one uh, one method and one technique. And uh, there is another technique. There also you are using uh, zircon grains directly, uh, but there instead of a laser beam, uh, uh, we we can bombard it with the, with an iron beam, right? Iron beam means uh, some uh, some atomized uh, iron like uh, like a uh, like a light beam uh, you can put uh, you can bombard an uh, iron beam okay i am ions uh, especially like uh, cerium you know cerium ce element right or sometimes uh, oxygen uh, ions right so these are uh, also bombarded into the uh, zircon grain and uh, uh, with that, uh, you get some material and it is uh, uh, sent into a, a mass spectrometer. So in this case, iron beam case, uh, we uh, <clears throat> we use a technique called SIMS. S I M S. Okay, SIMS. Uh, sensitive uh, SIMS means uh, secondary iron mass spectrometer. Secondary iron mass spectrometer because. Once you bombard an iron beam, uh, you will get uh, some secondary beam as well, right? So something coming out from there. So this one is taken up into the mass spectrometer, the secondary one. So that is what you. Uh, that's why you call it secondary iron mass spectrometer metric, right? So whatever the method, uh, <clears throat> you can uh, use uh, to count the uh, element, uh, count the atoms of uh, isotopes, different isotopes, and then put into the isotopic equation and uh, do the age determination, right? Uh, so <clears throat> these are the mainly popular, very popular methods since uh, <clears throat> many years time uh, people use for age determination of rocks. And uh, also, as I said, uh, in addition to zircon geochronology, uh, you can use uh, other, other, other methods like hall rocks, right? Hall rocks, uh, means uh, you dissolve the entire rock right you take uh, some powder of rock uh, you make uh, you take a representative sample and make it uh, into powder and then you take a very little amount of that like uh, maybe 50 milligrams or even less than that and that is dissolved and then that dissolve uh, that solution is uh, put into a mass spectrometer that is also possible right so that is uh, chemical dissolution is there uh, in that way also possible, right? So there are so many uh, 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 techniques applied or methodologies applied in age dating. So uh, we can apply rubidium strontium isotopes or samarium neodymium isotopes, lutetium hafnium isotopes, ren uh, rhenium osmium isotopes, or lead lead isotopes uh, in such cases, if you are taking a whole rock unit, right? So either way, it's okay you can get some ages from rocks. So these are the methods uh, applied in some of uh, these uh, techniques, uh, irrespective of their early studies or recent studies.
right? Most of these recent studies accompanied uh, with zircon dating rather than hollow rock dating. Uh, but uh, here uh, you can see uh, uh, some hollow rock dating also done, right? Because hollow rock dating gives sometimes uh, some troubles uh, when uh, you want to interpret them uh, because there are uh, uh, so many uh, other uh, other processes. Uh, I mean, uh, some other geological processes have uh, have uh, uh, influenced this whole rock isotopic system, right? For example, uh, if you have a rock, uh, and uh, if you are very uh, very confident that that rock has not subjected to uh, later uh, processes like uh, uh, metasomatism or some uh, some uh, later magmatic intrusion like that. Because uh, your whole rock uh, system may have been uh, disturbed by external uh, geological processes, right? We never know sometimes. So that's why we need very good petrological examination beforehand. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can't select the correct uh, rock for age dating. You will get some numbers, but those numbers will not be realistic. Okay. So therefore, uh, we have to go for very uh, very preliminary uh, and a very important uh, type of uh, petrographic examination before going to age dating right whether the, you are using whole rock or zircon whatever you have to examine the rocks very carefully uh, to uh, understand whether what type of uh, geological uh, effects uh, <clears throat> influence these uh, these rocks right so that is very important so anyway uh, we have methodologies like this uh, for uh, for uh, age dating. Okay, do you have any questions until now? Because uh, we are almost uh, reaching the time. Uh, I think we have only one hour today. Because I, actually I also have only one hour, so I cannot proceed uh, beyond that. Uh, so please let me know if you have any questions until now. Okay, so I will I will just show you this slide as well uh, before finishing, and uh, <clears throat> you will understand uh, what I mentioned before. I I told you uh, some uh, some uh, zircons have uh, some core regions, right? Some part as a core, and then you have another part as uh, you can say this part as the rim and uh, also uh, the inter or the intermediate part somewhere here you can call it call uh, you can call that part mantle so you have core mantle and rim uh, in a zircon grain okay so you have three parts core mantle and rim so these three parts are very important for example the core is here and uh, the mantle is somewhere here and the rim is here okay so if you take these uh, different areas because with the new techniques uh, we can spot dating we can do spot dating that is what uh, mentioned here see spot dating you can do spot dating with this uh, laser or sims uh, unlike uh, the dissolution in, in the case of dissolution you have to dissolve everything right you have to dissolve everything and then uh, measure the isotopes so that might be uh, giving you some mixed age also in some cases so therefore that uh, uh, tins method that we use for dissolution uh, case uh, evaporation or something right might not be giving you the correct dates uh, in some situations where some mixed ages are available in the cones right for example here you see the core is the age of the core is about 2 uh, GA, but you see uh, the rim gives 550 million years, right? So if you dissolve this everything together and you, you might end up with uh, a number like 1.8 or something. Okay, so that is not the correct age. So therefore, uh, the high, high, uh, high uh, uh, or more advanced techniques give you more higher resolution or more high resolution uh, in ages. High resolution means you can dissolve these ages uh, correctly into different zones so that you know that uh, deposition of this zircon or the starting time of this zircon is 2 billion years, but uh, 
uh, this part you can see some chemical contrast is also there so this darkness means some chemical contrast than uh, the interior part so that means some uh, entirely different process has taken place or experienced by this zircon actually this 550 represents the metamorphism right metamorphic time metamorphic process so during the metamorphism it has started from here right it has started from here and it started growing a new uh, zone of the cone uh, during this metamorphism. Okay, until that the zircon has grown uh, uh, under original environment, but later on it has suffered metamorphism from there onwards. That's why it is giving a younger age there. So likewise, we can effectively interpret uh, these uh, this type of zircon uh, uh, ages. Uh, by using the uh, new uh, advanced techniques, either laser or SIMS. So that's why people uh, like very much for laser or SIMS dating for uh, age determinations in the current context. Okay. Right. Uh, we call this uh, an overgrowth, right? Metamorphic overgrowth. We also, I mean, Sri Lanka zircons, uh, there are so many such overgrowths. And sometimes if the zircon was uh, generated during the metamorphism itself, only during the metamorphism, then you will have this entire grain as a 550 age, right? Such zircons are also there. But this is an ancient grain that has been sitting there before the metamorphism. That is the implication of this grain, right? So these are very important. Uh, we have to resolve these ages correctly uh, with high resolution uh, geochronological techniques. Okay, so I would stop here for today and uh, we will continue. Uh, tomorrow I can't continue, uh, but uh, today uh, uh, we will stop here uh, and I will, uh, I will do the lesson, uh, the coming lessons. Uh, I have to do several lessons more. Uh, I will inform you, right, through uh, Atrup answer. Okay, so we'll stop here for today and uh, make sure that you submit the uh, assignment by next week, by a week's time. Okay, thank you. Okay.